Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. This time I'm going to start Sector 10, Jack the Race. This sector has apparently 8 tasks and we'll see how far I can get. So Jack the Race are these uh, with the two braces. Actually that's the, that's the only variant that exists in, in Java. Um, in C Sharp you also have uh, this kind of arrays um, where they're actually quadratic so there's uh, the the same number of columns for every for every row in this yeah matrix but um, in this case this case um, the the size of the inner array might change uh, every time that's the same in Java so yeah let's see what we can do here so we get in a list of lists and an i and a j and we're supposed to return a number so first guess would be that i am supposed to return something like this just a wild guess but apparently the right one um Thanks for making the first task easy. Now I feel a little more comfortable and encouraged to continue on with the second task where I actually have no parameter and I'm supposed to return an area that has one, two, three, four, five elements and each of them contains, I'm not entirely sure if we can do that, um, another five thingies, I'm not, I'm not sure if that works, but apparently it does work, even though <laughs> somehow I don't get the full skill rating for this task. Um, can this possibly be written more concisely? I'm not sure. I wouldn't even know any solution how to write this more concisely in C sharp or actually uh, the only thing I can think of is that they want us to use a specific format what interesting um, that may explain if this is the C sharp translation he does for uh, he creates for my code and um, then I know why I didn't get the full skill rating this is kind of wow wow uh, Anyways, if I start this in C sharp, do I get this extra code? No, I don't get this extra code. So if I say here, five, five, what happens? This doesn't work in C sharp. So this is probably the reason of the bad skill rating because the solution I wrote in Java is not directly translatable to C sharp so he needed this helper methods thingy there so what I would do is innumerable repeat innumerable repeat zero five times and this five times Then I probably need to array here and here to convert it into the right format. Correct? Innumerable does not exist because I have to import link in order to do that. Yes, this solution compiles and it gives me the full skill rating. Hmm. Yeah, again, a case where this skill rating thing and this Java solution thing does not really work together nicely but uh, at least it's explainable if you see the translation he does for the Java solution 
even even though it was very small in Java, it was a really blown up solution in C sharp. So it's not what we want to do here. Anyways, let's continue with the next task. We get in a length and a number, and we create arrays. So to say we create an int array array result which is a new int array of size length. This time I'm not going to initialize this so hopefully um, he won't create this big blown up uh, extra translation code and give me the full skill rating in a couple of seconds i smaller length i plus plus the result i to a new int array of size length it's all zero, so let's see what happens. Um, probably won't get the full. Sc uh, okay, it's. We need to do something more actually, because we need to put the x value in there. So we need a second loop in j equals zero, j smaller length j plus plus and say result i result j equals x so this time it should an area value is required line 8 result there's a typo here um, so I guess I won't get the full skill rating for that I, I really should stop to estimate the skill rating I'm going to get because I, I'm usually wrong. So um, apparently if we don't initialize the inner array size uh, already at this point we're able to get full uh, skill rating also in the Java world. Let's continue on to the fourth task. This time we get in an array of integer arrays and we're supposed to return an array of integer arrays and I would say we're just supposed to increment every value we find in that array of arrays so I would do the following just say int i equals 0 i smaller input length i plus plus and then for int j equals 0, j smaller input i length j plus plus and then we want to say input i j plus plus and return the input. But apparently that's not correct because it's not plus plus but it's to the power of itself. Is this the right solution? We'll find out in a couple of seconds. No, apparently it's not. So for two it was the right solution, of course for one it's not the right solution. Ah, uh, it's times two. Sorry, times two, times two. No, it's not even times two. What's that supposed to be? <laughs> what is this input? I am confused. Um, what is this supposed to be? Dot dot dot. I mean, it makes sense for this and for this, but there's some strange thing which apparently I'm taking over to the result but I'm not supposed to take it over to the result confusion um, 
I really have no clue what that's supposed to mean. That's not an array. Um, what else could I do? What else could I do? Why is it four, by the way? If I get in one and multiply one by two, why does it return four? Maybe that one is not even relevant. There's a mismatch here. Um, I am confused. How can it be four? Can you just recompute that maybe? <laughs> no, that doesn't solve the case. Um, he goes through every row and every column and just multiplies the value by 2. So it should touch every position exactly once. And if I multiply 1 by 2 exactly once, it shouldn't be 4. I'm really confused right now. Um, just for my sanity, results equals new int array input length. Result i equals new int. Oh, sorry, there's a brace missing. Int array input i dot length. And now we have result is two times input ij and return results. What happens now? Works, works. But we don't have the third test case yet that failed before and now it doesn't fail. Okay, I guess this is a bug. I would like to see the... let me just copy that. Then I would like to see the <laughs> I guess I know what's going on here. Now there's a... No, 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 no. Um, I guess I know what's going on here. I guess that he somehow creates an array where the first and the second instance or element are equal instances so he goes through the first multiplies by one so it's two and it's two here also because those two arrays are the same instance and then he goes to the second again multiplies by two so he ends up with four so this is actually a problem of how he um, of how he generates the the input arrays because um, even though these are primitives, the arrays themselves are non-primitives, so uh, the arrays in the array can be uh, are, um, pointed at by reference, so that is why he get probably why he breaks, and if I copy that values and arrays and create new ones, um, I don't have that problem anymore. This is pretty confusing. This is pretty confusing. Anyways, after this short shock, I think I'm going to um, end this episode. I hope you learned th something from this. 
array confusion, be careful with nested arrays and um, object identity, sometimes there happen really, really, really strange things. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you liked the episode. If so, please consider to subscribe to my YouTube channel and or follow me on Twitter, I post regular updates on what I do. Uh, also, if you have any feedback, critics or ideas about what I could do, just drop me a comment or send me a message, I'm always glad to hear what you think. And if you're interested in this video, you might also be interested in other things I'm doing, uh, like the Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse or the Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life, so check out my YouTube channel for the other series I'm producing. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye!